everyone, it's Shannon from Sandoval Sea School. Welcome back to Nature Near You. Today we're going to be doing a flower dissection. All you're going to need is a notebook, um, a pen or a pencil, a flower, and then you're also going to need something with a hard edge. So I just had a gift card laying around my house that I'm going to use. You could use um, also a ruler, like the corner of a ruler if you have one, or just something sharp and a little bit thin. For my flower dissection, I used one from a Chinese hibiscus plant that I had in my backyard. You want to try to find a really large flower because it's going to be easy to see all of the different parts. If you can't find one in your backyard and you can safely go to the supermarket, you could always go and buy a lily. They're a really great flower to use for a dissection. Just be sure whenever you're picking a flower to only take one per plant. We don't want to take too many away from it. And also, always look out for insects before you pick the flower. There could be some ants on it or maybe a bee or wasp or another pollinator. So you just want to be careful before you pick it. Before starting the dissection, take some time to draw the flower. This way we can label it as we go along. Also, write what plant it came from. If you're not sure of the species, you can always use iNaturalist or picture this. There are two really great apps for plant identification. For the first part of our dissection, we are going to remove the sepals. So these are the small green leaves down here at the base of the flower. They're actually the first part of the flower that will form. They form a tightly closed little ball at the top of the stem called a bud, and they help protect the flower as it's developing. They'll stop it from drying out. To remove the sepals, just gently pull down from the flower towards the stem and pull them off in small pieces. The next step in our dissection is to remove the petals. To remove each petal, simply just pull on it from the center and remove it from the stem. Set each petal aside. The petals for a flower are really important. They're brightly colored or oddly shaped, and this is to attract pollinators. Pollinators are things like bees, butterflies, birds, or bats that come to the flower and help transport pollen. Before we go too much further, take a minute to label the parts of your flower we've already taken off. Remember the sepals are the small green leaves and we took off all of the petals. Now we're going to look at the reproductive organs of the flower. So the hibiscus has both female and male parts. So I'm pointing to the male or the boy parts of the flower right now, which is together called the stamen. The small little yellow balls are the anthers, and they're held up by something called a filament, which is like basically little tiny hair-like structures that hold them up. And the anthers carry the pollen. So if you rub your fingers along it and kind of shake it on your paper, you'll notice probably lots of yellow dust falling off, which is the pollen. The rest of our flower is all female. So there are actually three parts that make up the girl or female structure of the flower, which is called a pistil altogether. To see these parts a little bit easier, we're actually going to cut into our flower now. So this is when you're going to need that gift card or a ruler or whatever you're going to use with a hard edge. Just at the base of the flower, gently stick in the corner of that gift card and make just a little slit. That way you can get your fingernail or thumb inside of it. Gently pull it open. You're going to see a little white ball inside there and then what looks like a string or a tiny little tube going through the center. You don't want to cut that, so just gently Slide your thumbnail up the edge of the flower so you can split open that stalk there and easily see the small tube inside. And you can, you can pull away the anthers and the filament that we already learned about, the male part of the flower, so you can easily see the different parts of the female structure. The part that we just split in half is called the style. So I'm going to go ahead and just 
pull that apart right now so I can easily pull out the stigma, okay? So the style is a tube-like structure that holds up the stigma. The stigma, you can see, connects all the way down to the ovary. The stigma is really the sticky surface at the top, though, that bright red, almost alien-looking thing that um, is at the end of the tube. And that's where pollen will stick to and then get carried down into the ovary, which is that small bean-like structure that I'm pulling off of the stem right now. So you can go ahead and pull that off your stem and then you have your stigma connected to your ovary and you're going to need your card again because we're going to just cut that ovary right in half. That way you can open it up and it's a little hard to see on my screen right now but when you look inside, you see tiny little ovules. So this is what will become the seeds in a fruit. So when that pollen gets carried from the stigma, the top, all the way down the tube to the ovary, it will fertilize that ovary to then grow into a fruit, which will have seeds, and then those seeds will become new plants. Now all that's left to do is label both the male and female parts that we just dissected. And then we are all done with our flower dissection. Thank you so much for joining us again on Nature Near You. I had a lot of fun. I hope that you guys head out into your backyards and do a flower dissection as well. Be sure to send us some pictures and videos. And make sure to wash your hands when you go back inside. Stay safe and healthy everyone and join us next time on Nature Near You.